Hey, what's up? Today I have in my hands a business laptop. With a big screen, good performance and a lot of features useful for work. And most importantly, my first device with a 12th generation Intel processor. Which of course I will pay a lot of attention to. And as the cherry on the cake, this is the quietest laptop I have ever tested. Meet ThinkPad T16. The laptop is big. After all, the screen is 16 inches. But it is relatively thin, only 2 centimeters, and lightweight, 1 kilogram 680 grams. In terms of design everything is strict, without frills. On the top cover, only the ThinkPad line logo stands out, with a dot above the letter I, which is simultaneously an LED indicator. The materials used depend on the color of the laptop. The gray model has an aluminum top and a plastic bottom. In the case of the black version, as in my review, the bottom is also made of ordinary plastic, and the top of polycarbonate reinforced with fiberglass and carbon fiber. Although about the bottom I have some doubts. On the one hand there are official specs. On the other hand there is a mention of magnesium right on the bottom panel. The ThinkPad T16 is assembled solidly. Nothing squeaks. If I didn't know about the plastic, I would have thought that the case is made entirely of metal. And ThinkPad laptops are famous for testing to American military standards. The T16 passed them as well. As with most dark laptops, fingerprints collect quickly. On the top cover, they are slightly less noticeable due to some slightly velvety coating. Not a soft touch, but also something nice. The touches on the touchpad and the keyboard are the hardest to get stuck. In terms of ports, everything is very good. On the left is a full-size gigabit Ethernet, 2 USB-C, aka Thunderbolt version 4 with power delivery 3.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. Next is HDMI, a full-size USB version 3.2 with constant power delivery, and a combo audio jack. To the right is a second full-size USB and smart card reader. You didn't misunderstand. Not memory cards, but smart cards. Some of you may have seen them in some offices. They are plastic cards with a chip that are used, for example, for identification and access to offices, closed with an electronic lock. Continuing the question of security, we cannot forget about biometrics. A fingerprint scanner is integrated into the power button. It works quickly and accurately. A web camera above the screen is combined with an infrared sensor for face unlock. Here also no complaints to work. The entire Windows Hello suite is implemented. Basically, a physical curtain that covers the camera can also be attributed to the security. Plus, the Glance app from Metrics. I already mentioned it in my review of ThinkPad X1 Nano. It monitors your presence. And if you, for example, stepped away for coffee, the image on the screen will become blurred. Hello to curious colleagues. Webcam can be dedicated to a separate story. At last, it is a module which shoots video in full HD. Finally, a movement in terms of quality. And then 720p in the era of remote work and frequent video calls looks sad. Plus, there are two Dolby voice enabled microphones. This is a set of voice enhancers. For example, filtering the voice from external noise such as keyboard clacking, or vice versa capturing all the sounds in the room. If the laptop at the conference gathered a few people, the sound is specific for me, but the keyboard is really not heard. You can judge the quality of video and sound capture by yourself with this sample. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's the test of camera of ThinkBook T16. It's full HD quality. I hope the sounds also good. It has two microphones and Dolby voice effects to cancel some external noises. I push the keys. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. See you. The ThinkPad T16 has a full-size keyboard with a full-featured number pad. Plus, the arrow keys are unexpectedly large. Typing is comfortable. Of course, there is a backlight. It is one color white with two levels of brightness. Of the other controls, the standard ThinkPad set, red trackpoint manipulator, three separate buttons to it, and a medium-sized touchpad. The laptop has two speakers located above the keyboard. On the one hand, the sound is not as muffled as in laptops with speakers pointing down. On the other hand, do not expect some dense bass. This computer is, after all, for work. Again, 
Since this is a laptop for business, there are many configurations, including a different screen. This is always IPS panel 16 inches diagonal and aspect ratio 16 to 10. For example, there is a choice of panel with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels or touch sensitive. My version has the golden mean, 1920 by 1200 pixel resolution, 100% sRGB coverage and 400 nits of brightness. The screen is just good. Right color, not bad brightness, nothing fantastic, but nothing obvious minuses. Finally, hardware. I got the T16 with an Intel Core i5-1240P processor. This is a mid-range notebook processor based on Alder Lake architecture. It is more economical than powerful H-series chips while being more productive than U-series processors for ultrabooks. It consists of four high-performance cores and eight low-power cores. In total 16 threads. On board there is also 16GB of soldered RAM and a 512GB M2 format SSD with fairly average speeds by today's standards. A couple of words about possible upgrades. The motherboard has one free slot. So, you can add additional RAM up to 32GB into it. The SSD can also be replaced by a bigger and faster one. The Intel AX211 is responsible for the wireless communications. So, the notebook boasts high-speed Wi-Fi version 6E and Bluetooth version 5.1. As a nice bonus on the back there is a SIM card slot. Yes, the notebook has a LTE modem for mobile internet. So even away from the office Wi-Fi you will be in touch. It's the first time I've had a test with this kind of hardware, I mean processor. So, I ran more tests than usual. The fans of numbers will be almost satisfied. And so, Geekbench with single and multi-core performance. The results are 1,532 and 6,826 points. Next, Cinebench is single core and multi core. The results are 1,650 and 7,312 points. Rendering in Corona, the laptop managed in 3 minutes 26 seconds. Performance and applied tasks in the PC Mark test. There are a lot of values here in addition to the final one. So here is the full screenshot. Finally, I ran the stress test to see how the notebook behaves under load. In the beginning I had a short peak lasting less than a minute, when the processor got up to 40 watts and 99 degrees Celsius. But it quickly recovered. So practically during the whole test the power consumption was kept at 22 watts and the temperature at 69 degrees. Interestingly enough, at its peak the cooling system was only rustling slightly. And for the most part it worked completely silently. As a result, this is the quietest laptop I have ever reviewed. The graphics in my configuration is only integrated. It's Intel Iris Z graphics with 80 execution units. For work this is enough to get the job done. It easily handles a lot of working tasks up to Photoshop or simple video editing with sources in full HD quality. The hardware acceleration on the video card solves it. The 4K video with light color correction is already hard to pull in Premiere Pro. There are a lot of missed frames. Just to be on the safe side, I ran the 3 Mark Time Spy test for those interested. The results are on the screen. Don't expect to get a good gaming performance. It is not at all what this laptop is for. But if you really want, you can play something on medium or minimal settings. A 52.5 watt hour battery with fast charging support is responsible for battery life. The battery is relatively small for such a large laptop. Therefore, the battery life is average. For me a video file, full HD, H265, 10 bits, on the most economical settings lasted almost 6 hours. But there is one nice moment. There is a configuration T16 with a battery of 86 watt hour. That's where we can easily expect a full working day away from the socket. There is a 65 watt power supply with USB-C connector in the kit. If necessary, it can be replaced by some more compact GON charger. The main thing is the 65 watts output and support for power delivery 3.0. Pricing and conclusions. ThinkPad T16 at the time of the video recording costs about 1,555 US dollars or 1,800 euros in my configuration. Yes, on the background of home laptops it is not cheap. But let me remind you that this is primarily a tool to make money. Accordingly, it is evaluated differently. Here are important not the screen refresh rate or performance in games. Rather, it is the reliability of the design, the ability to be connected to the internet even outside the office, the safe identification of the user, including biometric, and in the case of the increased battery, full-day battery life, 
and on all these points, the ThinkPad T16 performs to the best of its ability. That's been it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.